And now, get ready to smile again with radio's home folks, Crisco's Vic and Save. Say, did you ever stop and think of all the wonderful things good food does for you? Why, it even helps to keep the whole family happy. If Dad's a little grumpy or the youngsters are out of sorts, just watch them break down and smile when they see their favorite cake coming on the supper table. I tell you, that, well, there's just nothing like the sight of maybe a great big coconut cake to chase the gloom away from anybody's face. But don't take chances when you bake your cakes these days. You owe it to yourself to use new Sure Mix Crisco because Sure Mix Crisco brings you three exclusive cake-making advantages. With this new Crisco, you can make cakes higher, lighter, and tenderer than you ever have before. Yes, in new Sure Mix Crisco, you got the benefit of the greatest shortening discovery in years, a patented discovery you get only in Crisco. That's why Crisco is the only home shortening we know of that can now give you these three exclusive advantages for cakes. And you'll have proof that Crisco is different when you see the wonderful new kind of cake batter it gives you. Yes, ma'am, once you put this new Crisco in your mixing bowl, you'll see with your own eyes that your cake batter is creamier and smoother than ever before. And this batter doesn't separate or curdle as batters made with other shortening so often do. And wait till you see what this new kind of Crisco batter is going to do for your cakes. Why, we've made hundreds of baking tests with many different recipes and every well-known shortening you can buy. And these tests prove that cakes made with these smoother Crisco batters are higher and lighter than cakes made with any other shortening you can buy. Yes, and those same cakes can be tenderer and better eating than any cakes you ever made, no matter what shortening you've been using. So don't miss out on these wonderful cakes. Get Crisco today. I can promise you the best eating cakes you've ever made. Well, sir, it's about 7.30 o'clock as we join our friends at the small house halfway up in the next block now. And here they are in the living room, settled for a quiet evening at home. Vic is established at the library table, gazing blankly at a sheet of writing paper. Sade and young Rush sit side by side on the Davenport with sections of the newspaper. Complete silence has prevailed for the past quarter hour. But now, the master of the menage throws down his pencil disgustedly, saying... I can't get anywhere with this. What is it you're doing? Trying to fix up a biography of Hank Goodstuff. Oh, for mercy's sake. I thought you had important office work there. Well, this is important enough. Lodge headquarters dropped me a letter today in which they requested a brief, pithy paragraph about the exalted little dipper of the drowsy Venus chapter. Well, that's Hank. Seems they're running short biographies of all the exalted little dippers in the lodge. My trouble is I can't think of anything to say about Hank. They're introducing a new character in the third Lieutenant Stanley book I got here, Gov. Copy it. What'd you say? Um, Jack Woodward, a sturdy, well-built lad of 15, loved the great out of doors. You can change that to Hank Gustop, a sturdy, well-built lad of 39, loves the great out of doors. And that's true, too. I saw him asleep on the Illinois Central Depot platform just this afternoon. You people are a great help. Uh, there's something for the Lodge magazine? Yeah, next issue. Okay. Uh, Jack Woodward had straight, even teeth, the color of rich cream. There was a streak of mischief in his makeup, and he loved to play boyish pranks on his four elder brothers, who were all feeble-minded. All right, One Mr. Afternoon... Funny Man, that's enough side spitting comedy. <laughs> Difficulty is, I can't think of any items to Hank's special credit. Neither can I. I mean, there don't seem to be anything outstanding about Hank. He's a peach of a fella and a conscientious worker in the lodge, but he lacks... Polish. You were being witty? No. Hank lacks distinction. He's never done anything that's exciting. Headquarters sent me a few sample biographies to give me an idea what they want, but uh, the darn things don't help a bit. Well, read one once. Uh, where did I put that letter? Oh, here. Jack Woodward was well-versed in Indian lore and knew all the secrets of the forest. The rabbits and squirrels were his playmates, and even the birds in the trees responded to I wonder if we could have it quiet. thought you might pick up some hints from this. Uh-uh. Okay, Sade. Hmm. J. Ralph Gunsport of Sleever, Montana, is a crack shot with bow and arrow. Recently, he shot his brother-in-law's hat off at a distance of 40 yards. Uh-huh. Grasp the idea? Yeah. J. Ralph Gunsport is the exalted little dipper of the Delarius Dashen chapter. 
editors of the large magazine want short items about all of the exalted little dippers. Just a line or two, see? But the line has to have some punch in it. What's outstanding about Hank, I can, uh, I can write. He sings. Oh, that's out. Why? It says in the letter I received today that they want no reference to singing ability. Seems they tried the stunt once before, and the whole outfit of exalted little dippers claimed that they were singers. Well, that's too bad. Mm, it is. Because Hank really is a vocalist. If it wasn't for the doggone restriction, my item would be all cut and dry. Sure. Hank got to stop his uh, talented baritone. His rendition of wood that these pale hands chrysanthemums might gather is always received with wild applause. Exactly. But no soap. Uh. Kiddo, here's another thumbnail biography sample. Uh Hmm? Wilbur Atwood of Flex Creek, Ohio, is known extensively as a contortionist of no mean ability. When he's feeling right, Mr. Atwood can put one foot in his mouth and the other foot on the nape of his neck. Oh, yes. See, that's quite a trick. And here's another one. H.L. Flybe, a weekly Arizona, puts in his spare time making money. Mr. Counterfeiter? Huh? Is he a counterfeiter? <laughs> no. Never let me finish. H.L. Flybe, a weekly Arizona, puts in his spare time making money. Mr. Flybe carries a paper route. Oh. Uh. And, uh... There's still another. Harry O. Fox of East Filchman, Minnesota, is noted for his strength. Mr. Fox amuses his friends by picking up his mother and tossing her bodily to the roof of her residence, a height of 18 feet. Oh, my. Or uh, Arlo Skeely of Hook, Alabama, has gained recognition as a poet. Prisoners in the local jail were recently forced to memorize 50 verses of his uh, poet on the subject, Teacher, I've Been a Bad, Bad Boy. Oh. You see, these little paragraphs have all got punch. Have you made any stabs at writing a biography on Hank? Oh, a few, but they're no good. Got no zip. I say here, uh, Hank Gutstap is mighty well liked by his fellow Sky Brothers in the Drowsy Venus chapter. Mr. Gutstap is extremely fond of cigars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I don't know it's weak, but... Dog got it, I've racked my brains. I want to do right by Hank, you know, but what in thunder can I say? He can sleep ten hours at a stretch on the Illinois Central Depot platform. I doubt if that information would rebound to Hank's credit. It would cause his lips to curl and eyebrows to raise. Yeah, I suppose. The human race would get the idea he was a loafer. Exactly. Then here's another effort. Uh, it isn't any better than the first. Hank gets up, often indulges in loud, ringing laughter. He enjoys humorous anecdotes. Mm. See? Mm. No punch. Uh-oh. Hank got stop is healthy. Is that another biography? Yeah. Kind of a short biography. Well, at least it's to the point. In fact, I rather think I like the flavor of it. Hank got stop is healthy. Hank got stop is healthy. Say, don't you think the very simplicity of that has a vigorous charm? Hank got stop is healthy? Yeah. A little on the skimpy side, ain't it? That's its virtue. Hank got stop is healthy. Hank got stop is healthy. Oh, goodness me. What's the matter? So much fuss and feathers over one little dinky sentence. Well, it's the fact that it's one little dinky sentence that makes it imperative that each word be carefully weighed in the balance. If I was writing an essay on Hank, I could slap along as careless as a horse. This way, though, every letter in every word stands out vividly clear. Oh. Hank got stop is healthy. Yep, I believe I'll send that in just as it is. Huh? Play your hand a rummy guy. Okay. I suggest we have a six game tournament where hey, we both you know what I bet I could would be a good idea? Uh uh-uh. uh. Consult Hank on this. I believe I'll do it. I'll telephone the Royal Throne twenty five cent barber shop. That's where he generally hangs out this time of the evening. Try to be getting the cards out of the drawer? Yeah. Did you know Charlie raises come and Mrs. Harris's rumor Mr. Sludge both get their hair cut in at that C D establishment? Uh uh-uh. uh. Well they do. Uh eight nine six three W please. Correct. Might have to sell Hank on this. If I ever think it's a pretty doggone short biography. Hank, that stop is healthy. <laughs> yeah, he is liable to think it's short. But that's its charm. It's brief, pointed, and punchy. No embroidery or wordiness. Pure simplicity. Uh, hello, uh, Ed? Uh, Vic Cook, Ed. Say, is Hank got stop on deck tonight? Oh, hasn't been around, huh? Well, wasn't anything important. No, uh, how are you feeling, Ed? Uh-huh. Oh, well, that's good. 
Oh, fine as silk, thanks. Well, look, Ed, if Hank does happen to mosey along, you might ask him to give me a ring. Dandy. Okay, Ed. So long. No, that's its charm. Julius Caesar said, Vini, Vidi, Visi. I came, I saw, I conquered. And those three words have resounded down through the ages. A compact statement is a good statement. Hank Goodstock is healthy. I'm pleased with my work. Oh, work. I'll tell you another brief speech that will never die. All right. You've heard of the Indian chieftain Blackhawk. Hmm. Black Hawk was standing on the side of the mountain, gazing down into the valley. He was looking for enemy Chippewas. An enemy Chippewa snunk up behind him with a hatchet. The hatchet flashed through the air, and Black Hawk's skull was cracked open. Ouch, said Black Hawk calmly. Ouch. Just that one word. And now all over the world, whenever a human being is injured, he says, Ouch. Is that the truth? True. Hmm. Ouch. Hmm. Hank Gutstock is healthy. Hmm. Hank Gutstock is healthy. Hmm. Hey, guys, come on. I got the rummy hands all dialed out. Your all phone's ringing. I'll get it probably, Hank. Might be Fred and Ruthie feeling like 500. Or Bluetooth Johnson wanting the eight cents I owe. Hello? Oh, yes, Ed. Well, uh, is he there? Well, can I speak to him? Oh. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Well, okay, Ed. You bet, Ed. Well, thanks just the same, Ed. All right, Ed. Goodbye, Ed. Barbershop, fella. Yeah. Oh, gone it. What's the matter? Hank Gutstock is sick. which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. And there we leave Crisco's Bickensade until tomorrow. Say, I'll bet the fishermen in your house are going to bring home plenty of fish for you to fry this summer, so have plenty of pure, all-vegetable Crisco on hand. You see, you need a mild, fresh frying fat to bring out the delicate flavor of freshly caught fish. And no shortening we know of comes to you purer, fresher, or creamier than sure mix Crisco. So, when Sonny brings in his cat, just put the fish down the center, clean it, and remove the center bone, saute it in about one quarter inch of hot, melted Crisco till it's delicately browned and crisp on both sides. And boy, that's going to be just about the best eating fish you ever tasted. And don't forget, Sure Mix Crisco does wonderful things for cakes, too. Why, we've made hundreds of baking tests, and they prove that cakes made with this new Crisco are higher lighter and tenderer and better eating than cakes made with any other household shortening you know of. So get Crisco today and use it for all your baking and frying. And don't forget to listen to Crisco's Bick and Save tomorrow. This is Melvin Allen speaking. <laughs>